Attachments are the emotional connections we form with others. Starting from our early interactions with our caregivers, you've probably stumbled upon discussions online about avoidant attachment styles, especially the dismissive avoidant type. But here's the thing, there's not enough talk about the fearful avoidant style, and sometimes people confuse the two. That mix-up can be harmful because it leads to misconceptions, demonization, and misunderstandings of people struggling with these attachment styles due to past traumas. That's why it's important to differentiate between dismissive and fearful avoidance styles. Understanding these distinctions can shed light on why people behave the way they do and guide them to seek the right support when needed. Before we continue, please remember that attachment styles change over time, and with guidance, you can develop a more secure attachment style. Both fearful avoidant and avoidant dismissive attachment style stem from a distrust of others. People with either of these attachment styles are wary of getting close to other people and, as a result, don't open up easily. But the differences in these styles lie in how they were formed. Someone with an avoidant dismissive attachment style refuses to get close to others because they don't trust others. They have experienced rejection in their early childhood years. As a result, they have come to believe that those around them will disappoint them or reject them once again. Parenting behaviors that could develop an avoidant dismissive attachment style include inconsistent parenting or overly perfectionist parents. A fearful or disorganized attachment stems from a vastly different place. It comes from abusive behaviors, trauma, or neglect. Below are signs that you may have a fearful avoidant attachment style. Number 1. Childhood was shaped by abuse. As stated above, a fearful avoidant attachment is created by fear. This fear was created in a traumatic or abusive early childhood. It could have been caused by neglectful or abusive parents who did not create a safe environment for the child. As a result, this child grew up with a sense of constant instability and fear. As an adult, they might feel insecure or unsafe in the world. Relationships might be difficult to create, let alone navigate and cultivate. They never learn to self-soothe or understand their emotions, and unfortunately, individuals with a fearful or disorganized attachment style may try to replicate the same abusive behavior patterns they grew up with. Why? because it feels familiar, because they never learned what a relationship could be like outside of what they experienced. Dismissive avoidance, unlike fearful avoidance, grow up in environments where their emotional needs are dismissed. They prioritize independence and often suppress emotions, making it hard to form deep connections. Fearful avoidance crave intimacy but fear rejection, while dismissive avoidance maintain emotional distance as a coping mechanism. Number 2. Distrust in themselves and others. For fearful avoidance, trust is a real uphill battle they struggle not only to trust others, but also to trust themselves. Trauma from their past has left deep scars, making it hard for them to see their own worth and to trust that others truly care about them. It's like they're carrying around this heavy burden of doubt and uncertainty because of what they've been through. On the flip side, dismissive avoidance have more difficulty trusting others, but they're generally more comfortable trusting themselves. This fundamental difference sets them apart from fearful avoidance. Number 3. Feeling like you don't deserve to be loved Because this attachment style was created in a hostile and traumatic environment during early childhood, people with a fearful avoidant attachment style may find it difficult to see themselves as worthy of being loved. Not only that, but like what we mentioned earlier, this trauma also often leads to a deep-seated distrust of others. Unlike dismissive avoidance, who prioritize independence and emotional distance to cope, Fearful avoidance push away love, because early trauma has shaped their perceptions of themselves and others, making it difficult to accept and receive love. Number 4. Intimate relationships are confusing. Consequently, people with fearful attachment may find romantic relationships confusing. Romantic relationships will be challenging to navigate because they usually involve being vulnerable, caring for each other, and usually behaviors that evidence romantic feelings. However, for an individual with a fearful attachment, they may find all of this confusing. The difference here is that fearful avoidance may crave intimacy, but fear rejection. Dismissive avoidance prioritize autonomy and may struggle to navigate the emotional aspects of romantic relationships altogether. Number 5. Insensitivity towards others Another sign of a fearful avoidance attachment is an insensitivity towards others. However, this is not to say that everyone with a fearful avoidant attachment is insensitive. However, there are moments of ambivalence. They may demonstrate vaguely affectionate feelings while at the same time distancing themselves from others. For those who do not know or understand a fearful attachment, their behavior may seem erratic or confusing, almost like they're leading a person on. As a result, it can be interpreted as being insensitive or selfish. 
However, the vagueness towards others shows the battle they have within themselves. They desire connection and intimacy, but are afraid to initiate. In contrast, dismissive avoidance typically display a more consistent pattern of emotional detachment, rather than ambivalence. They may appear indifferent or aloof towards others, prioritizing their independence and self-reliance above emotional connection. 6. Tendency to keep conversations at a surface level People with fearful avoidant attachment struggle in their conversations with others. They tend to keep conversations at a superficial level, to avoid getting too emotionally involved in someone's life, but most importantly, to avoid people getting too close to them. But how is this different from dismissive avoidance? Well, conversely, dismissive avoidance also tend to engage in superficial conversations, but for different reasons. They do so to avoid losing their autonomy and independence, rather than out of fear of rejection and being vulnerable. Number 7. Negative Perspectives and Overly Reserved Fearful avoidance often hold a pervasive pessimism around relationships. They often feel like they're not worthy of love or acceptance and everyone's judging them, which can make them constantly worry about being rejected or abandoned. This lack of trust in themselves and others can really weigh them down, making it difficult to build meaningful connections and fostering a constant fear of being hurt. This is why they tend to be overly reserved, keeping a distance from others to protect themselves from potential pain. Even something as simple as a friend canceling plans can hit them hard, making them feel like it's a personal rejection. This negative outlook feeds into the cycle of self-doubt and self-criticism, making it really tough for them to trust others or build healthy relationships. Unlike people with anxious attachments, who seek out validation and reassurance to ease their anxiety, fearful avoidance tend to do the opposite because they fear rejection or abandonment. 8. Difficulty taking responsibility for their actions Imagine you're carrying around this heavy backpack filled with all the tough stuff you've been through in life. For someone with a fearful avoidant attachment, that backpack might be packed with experiences that make them feel like they're always the victim. They've been through some tough times and it's easy for them to slip into a victim mindset, but they don't feel responsible for their actions. It's like they're constantly dodging feelings of guilt and shame because admitting fault means facing some really tough emotions. Plus, there's this constant fear of being rejected or abandoned. So, taking responsibility feels like stepping into a minefield of potential hurt. But here's the thing. By avoiding responsibility, they're also missing out on a chance to grow and heal. It's like trying to walk forward while carrying this heavy backpack. It's holding them back from moving towards healthier relationships and happier life. So therapy or some deep self-reflection can help them unpack that backpack, face those tough emotions, and learn to take responsibility for their actions in a way that's empowering, not overwhelming. If you identify with all of the signs above, please know that your attachment style doesn't have to dictate your future. Attachment styles? Change if you want to change them. There are ways to heal from your past so that it doesn't have to be your or someone else's future. You have the power to disrupt and change so that the chain of pain and hurt doesn't continue. There are various resources available, but there are a few baby steps you can work on. Gain more knowledge to better understand your attachment style and how you approach relationships, Look inward at the sources of your pain. Learn to love yourself and set boundaries. Learn to speak up for yourself and communicate your needs and what triggers you. If necessary, seek professional help that can guide you on this journey of better understanding yourself. We wish you the best of luck and hope that you heal soon. If you like this video, please like and share this video. Subscribe to stay tuned for more content.